everybody. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Tomasz Opaszyński. I'm a creative technologist here at Adobe for the last year and a half. And I'm working on AI and ML projects with a bunch of researchers, designers, and others. And today, it's my pleasure to host Lisa Kearney, uh, who is a professional retoucher, finisher, uh, creative, and amazing person all around. Uh, funny story. Let me turn off my stream here. Uh, funny thing is, we used to work together years ago, so yeah. we know each other pretty well. So you will see us uh, riffing off of each other. And I'll uh, give it to Lisa. Lisa, awesome. take it away. Thank and you very much. Tomas is a genius, by the way. If you guys don't actually know this, he is. He's absolutely brilliant. And in fact, I don't think you show enough work, frankly. He's wonderful. And I, if you could put my screen on, I would love to um, talk a little bit about what we're going to go through and show today. So I am an entertainment finisher, retoucher. So I work on entertainment art, and this is where Tomas and I have cut our teeth. Yep. Cutting is the uh, big emphasis here. Doing a lot of work, uh, compositing, color work, comping, comping meaning design. Maybe it's good to talk about the terms yes, a little bit. A, a finisher versus a designer. A designer comes up with an idea, and then a finisher rebuilds it from scratch. So I work on all sorts of stuff, all sorts of genres. So I'm um, very broad, I would say. I'm a broad broad. Can I say that? Mm, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, oops, getting in trouble in the first 10 seconds. Um, yeah, so I work on a lot of entertainment, Netflix, uh, HBO, Apple. Um, well, frankly, everybody, right? Because yeah. this industry is pretty, how do we say, ubiquitous. We're, we're all across the board. Amazon. And if some of you look there, some of those are pretty darn old, like Blade, good heavens. When did Blade come out? 30 years, years ago? ago? Years ago. Oh, oh yeah. So I've been doing this for a really long time. And one of the things I'm really looking forward to about us talking today, not just AI, but actually work. Like, mm -hmm. how, how do you work professionally? So this might be a little different than some of the other um, Adobe Lives where it's not just about, oh, here's a technique and here's how you do something. but why are you doing it? What's the visual language we're talking about? Because I think that's really important, yeah? It's it's a thing that we often forget about. We think that Photoshop or any tool that you're using is the tool, but actually the tool is here. And what Lisa didn't mention, what she does, it's it's a it's a it's a sort of miracle. But because when we have creatives uh, building files, they they go really wrong on so many layers, right? We improvise often, cut stuff here and there, improvise here and there. But Lisa has to not even take it, uh, um, uh, unfold it, and rebuild this whole thing as it was and then make it even better, right? So when we design for, for uh, proposals for a client, this is, let's say, 70, 80 percent their general idea, some details for, for uh, some sort of guidance, and that's it, right? And then it, this goes to Lisa, and she puts her talent into it and really technical knowledge of Photoshop and, and you know, separation and others, and makes it actual final product. So without Lisa, I'll be screwed. Ah, I see my poster. Yes, uh, yes. Um, so, we have worked together for a very long time. So, so Tomasz that's, that's, is here. That's her. Yes. That's her background. That's her talent. That's her unique perspective that not too many of us can do, to be honest. Uh, yes, I can uh, uh, sharpen image, but that's that's the extent of my stuff. But Lisa takes it to the next level. So we can talk about it. AI, ML. Ask questions. I will go through the chat in the meantime. So Lisa. Uh, go through your presentation, and I will look for cool questions. And if you don't mind me, I will interrupt sometimes if people have questions. And please do have them. That's that's why you, we, you have Lisa and me here to ask questions. And if there is anything we can help with, let us know. Excellent. Right. And I'm going to say there is uh, Jason from BLT. Yes, I do feel like dancing. That's a little uh, insider. <laughs> I don't know if you remember Jason from BLT. Yes. So um, listen, here's what I want to talk about. Um, a lot of people come to me looking to do work, and they I think out there in the universe, there's YouTube and other places you can learn how to do some techniques, but no one's really talking about the business of the work, right? So how to, how to actually work in a way where you're earning money and having clients and whatnot. So I'm going to talk about this kind of thing. So for example, on um, the Showtime piece, we get these images. Let me go back for one. So for your honor, it's a really cool black and white, interesting image. You could do a vertical and a horizontal, but that's the image we start with. So it's like, oh, it's a daylight unit shot. What? Yeah, this is what we get. Mm -hmm. And how do you make it so it can be what we call modular, and it can be used in all sizes, different sizes. We're going to talk about that a bit. And I will tell you in the following stream coming up with Jesus Ramirez, we're going to talk about modular work and how you actually physically do 
that kind of thing. So first of all, I'd like to talk about some definitions. And Tomasha mm -hmm. and I were talking earlier about how folks don't know this. They don't know the visual language of what they're creating. So since we're talking about entertainment, I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, what are these genres? What's action, adventure, family versus comedy, romance? And what are the solves? And the solves are like a container solve or underwater or illustration or color, double exposure. So yeah. if you'll humor me, I'm going to spend a few <laughs> minutes uh, actually showing Good. you some stuff so we can talk about what you're going to do and why you're going to do it, not just, oh, how do you do it in Photoshop? So please note this down. A great site for inspiration is impawards.com. You can find posters all the way down to, I think, 1920s to, if you want to see oh, samples of who's doing what and how they're doing it. So it's really, really great You resource. can also look, look at the agencies that are doing uh, super awesome work, right? You can see how different agencies specialize in certain things. So if you're planning your career, you can go there and be like, ah, I'm syncing with this agency. Maybe I should send my portfolio to them and such. So they're not all the same if you were to, to study them. Yeah, a absolutely. And I'll, yeah. I'll notice we have in the chat Marco Blanco, who works at Libra ah. Rose, great ad agency. You can check them out and see what kind of work they're doing. So let's just take a tiny moment and look at the history of movie posters. Like, What did posters look like in the 1920s and the 1930s and then the 1940s? Do you see how they kind of all are very similar, very illustrated, uh, divided in half? You're going to see some themes repeated in the future, which is kind of interesting. Saul Bass, the most amazing Classic. designer. You'll see people currently who will emulate the look of Saul Bass in current movie posters. And then, of course, you've got the giant conglomeration mm -hmm. of heads with the little scene. Yep, you're going to see that again yep. in just a second. And I think it's important to note that why do we why do we speak in this way? So for airport, you have the action shot, if you will, with the little simulation, uh, the little headshots, because who was in the film was really important, very important. That's why they put them in there. Um, bed knobs and broomsticks, you've got a vibe for Disney. What does that look like? Mind you, they've changed a bit. Yes. But there's still kind of that formula that we all keep. So um, I hope this is helpful to kind of take a look for a second at the history of what things look. Look how graphic this is. Midnight Cowboy Grip poster, Jaws. Jaws is actually a container inside, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a container solve also. Oh, the eyes of Lord Mars. Oh, Such a great poster. Absolutely it, great it poster. Was inspiration for many. Like, I want to say uh, something, if I may. Please. Th there is the easiest way to see how poster is different from any other artwork is to put the billing block. The little data that's there at the oh, bottom, you know, yes. com composer, yes. director. If you put it on any image, automatically in your mind, you keep thinking, oh, it looks like a poster. Oh, yeah, this little yes. type there, right? Yeah. Legal, it's, we, we call it billing block, right? Mm -hmm. So if you put this on any image, your perception of that automatically changes. Experiment with this one day, find it online somewhere, that there are plenty of templates, and see how your mind will be like, oh, it looks like a poster. Kind right, of thing. versus a book cover. Yeah, why yeah, does something yeah. look like a poster versus a book cover? So that's an interesting thing. And why I want to talk about this is people come to, uh, to, to me to talk about work, and they don't understand the visual language of movie posters, so how can they design if they don't know? And mm -hmm. I was going to ask you to speak to this because we talked a little bit about this for the international poster for aliens versus <laughs> the U.S. poster. I mean, mind you, this is 1979 aesthetics, but look how different this poster is. There is funny story. The Polish poster is, is, is the first one there. I'm Polish. Um, and this is my favorite move, movie. So I, I, I just I just got excited. Uh, here, here's what's, what's really funny. We have to understand as a designers, we have to absorb the soft data that comes to us as a, yeah. as a cultural differences, how we pursue color uh, or perceive color around the world. What is the medium history within this segment of the world, right? In Japan, you see Japanese posters. They are very heavily uh, uh, typed. There is a lot of typography there. And this is because of Japanese culture, how they recommend movies to each other. If it's on a poster, then nobody is blamed for <laughs> recommending you this film, yeah. right? It's the film, not your friend's fault, right? That's why we put a lot of type on, on Japanese posters for them to read it, right? And if you know more and more of that, and I highly encourage you to study that, study meaning of color, meaning of face facial expressions, meaning of body yeah. language. What yeah. does it mean? Am I angry right now or am I happy, right? Can I be angry right this? Not really, right? So r learn that and then use it in the posters and you will convey the story better. Look at those guys. They could have arms like this, 
But right. that will mean something completely different. Open arms with, with the stuff yeah. with, toward, towards you, right? That means totally different things. So uh, colors, shapes, forms, uh, human facial expressions, etc. study it. Yeah, and also comedy. So comedies are on white. So yep. look at these look at these posters on white. So it reads automatically in American culture, this is a comedy. These are, uh, geez, 1983 and 1998. I'm, I'm blocking the, the <laughs> date there, sorry. But you can see that it's still the same kind of formula. And Tomas did a, I think it was June 15th on Adobe Live. He did a yeah. great Adobe Live on storytelling, which will help. That, that was a great, great session. Yeah, if you can find it, find it. We, we talk yeah. about frames and, and, and such. And look at the white background. Look how easily you can uh, decipher facial expression that you're directed yeah. towards, right? A smile is more, the most important. If I was to remove the smile and focus you on a castle yeah. behind it or something else, we will lose the sense of humor yeah. there. So that's And why. look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at this coloring and white background. These are almost 10 years apart but it's thematic. Mm -hmm. So when you guys are doing your books or pitching, you'll know, oh, am I doing an animation? Oh, is it comedy? Great, I have to have a lot of white. I have to have a lot of crisp primary colors, right? Look at the colors, look how bright they are. And I think this is important. I hope this is worth uh, the conversation for you guys. I'm curious if you wanna chime in and let us know if this is interesting, because I feel like folks are working so hard to just learn Photoshop or just learn AI without knowing why. Why are you, what, what, what's the point? What, what's the goal? So I want to talk to you guys about this, DC versus Marvel. So look at this DC, dark, brooding, Arr. Arr. Um, right? Marvel, uplifting, uh, aspirational. Arr. So right? <laughs> so the colors are going to be different, right? Yeah, because the how they like to message is different. And so you don't want to come up with the next Thor poster and have it look like a Batman poster because it's the wrong visual vocabulary. Yeah? Big heads in the sky, still going on. So here comes Legends of the Fall. Oh, I remember when this came out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, blue sky. Okay, two big heads in the sky, three big heads in the sky with a little scene underneath. Well, guess what? This is 2023. It's the same story. Big heads in the sky with a little scene theme underneath. So it's still um, thematic. The same yeah. themes are still in play. Okay, so yeah, very curious if you guys are finding this interesting. You know, if you've got a Stallone movie, Stallone's got his color palette he likes, and you know he is, what do you call it, someone who's got a vote. Like, Stallone <laughs> gets to decide what his poster it's looks executive like. Executive vote. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah. you're going to find these things. Look at them. The coloring is still very, very, very similar. You know, speak, speaking of trans and, and formulaic sort of design, it, you may look at it from both sides. Yes, there is oversaturation of that sometimes, right? There was too many white backgrounds. But then look at it also from this perspective that you immediately recognize what the theme is. If you drive by and think about posters that way, the drive by, walk by, if they're moving on your UI, you can easily recognize and within a second you can decide, is it something serious? Is it something happy? Am I yeah. intrigued? Am I not? So think about it this, this way. I know that there is a lot of themes as far as like the color orange and blue, right? But this is the, the easiest way to feature my, my uh, orangey face on a blue background. This right. is the easiest contrast that you can do. So think about it this way as a, as a devices, as a tools to get quicker response from people. Yeah. The more you complicate stuff, the longer it will take people to understand, and they may be actually driving away and not seeing your poster. Absolutely, oh, yeah. and also it's it's a color that we recognize, we read it, we read this cyan blue red as space. You automatically mm -hmm. will know that this is basically a space film. So that's that vocabulary. So. Um, uh, Speaking of color, like look at Western. Western films have that this kind of genre of coloring, right? So the the formats are different. It's not all the same, like Big Head in the Sky with Scene. They're different. Some are graphic solves, but look at the coloring and look at the type. Those are thematic, right? So uh, speaking of sci-fi versus Western, so sci-fi, we looked at Western and then we looked at sci-fi before. Look at this. So sci-fi, we had that blue color, right? Now we have a movie that's both sci-fi and Western. Well, what do you do? Well, you have the warm color with the cool color. Look at the fonts. Look at the type. Cowboy versus Aliens on the first piece, it's uh, a serif font. And then on the second piece, it's more of a metallic font, like a, a straight edge, yeah. I forget what we call those. I don't do type, by the way. Um, <laughs> but look, so you understand now here, you're mixing the colors of a Western and a sci-fi. Ah. Mm. And this is important when you wanna work, when you wanna get jobs doing what we do, yeah. which yeah. is fun. And then I wanna talk for just a second about what type of art there is. So you've got a teaser art, whoops, let me go back one. A teaser art, which actually teases out the show. Then you have the key art, and then once you have the key art for some shows, if there's some money behind it, you're gonna have character cells, 
right? Yeah. Character cells are super, super fun to do. Lisa, we have a question. Yes. May I interrupt please. you? Uh, we have a question. How do you thumbnail out a movie poster with sketches or quick photo comps? Excellent. How okay, so how I personally work is I set a mood, I make a mood board. I go on impawards.com and I pick out posters that have compositions that I'd like to copy or color. And I did say copy. Like, I like to start with a starting point and go, okay, I like this. Like, for example, on this Black Panther poster, if you see it, I like that big, forced, uh, strong composition where the heads are really big. And so I will pick out a bunch of different styles I'd like to emulate. And then I will actually start layering my imagery on mm -hmm. it. I do not sketch. A lot of people will sketch in advance. I visually sketch, so I sketch with photos. Do you use AI right now to do any of no, that? No, I don't. I do okay. not. I, I actually, um, for AI, for coming up with concepts, it, for me, it's still a little too challenging to control it. Mm -hmm. oh, I gotcha. So that's why mm -hmm. I do it with photo comps. However, I will tell you professionally, I am already getting AI-generated comp studies from clients for me to follow mm -hmm. as prompts. I just want to call attention to, notice these character cells for Black Panther, you notice they had the very different color vibes because they were going to different audiences and they're speaking yeah. to different audiences. I hope you guys are hanging in here with this. I know it's a lot of data, but I think it'll be really helpful once we get to the actual making of art because yeah. you gotta know why you're making your art. Exactly, and it's important, dead horse here. important for this to be on YouTube so you can always go back, watch the previous Adobe Lives, and then you will put the whole puzzle uh, game together for entertainment advertising. How? What's the uh, language? What's the color meaning of, of that? Hopefully we can do a few more. <laughs> I'm plugging myself into a few more Adobe Lives here. Absolutely. But I think that will be needed because we often lose the sense of story. We, we tend to think that uh, here's the image and I understand it that way. But actually the trick is that you're designing for others. And would they understand it? Would they like it, right? One of my uh, most humbling moments was at Netflix where I thought that I designed for myself, which was not true because I was designing for, for members out there. So I had to completely change my thinking, uh, look at the data, soft data, the, the, the things that I remember from the past, and implement that in the design. Yes. And that was second, uh, a completely yeah. different set, set of tools. So I'm sorry, Lisa, uh, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So yeah, uh, yeah. Tomas was talking about the type and the building block. So if you look at this kind of teaser, you've got World War Z, you've got a very graphic solve teaser, and then you've got um, the teaser with Brad Pitt, but then the key art, notice the billing block. Key art always has billing block in it. No. Okay. Awesome. So poster, more on poster types here again. So here's the domestic key art, but then here's the international key art. Now, I don't know if you can speak to this, but international has a whole different conversation, a visual vocabulary, yes. different visual conversation it has. Why is Brad Pitt not in the international? I can't, uh, so from my experience at Netflix is that we've learned on a lot of examples that different things are important at the different regions of the world. The star for us may not be the same star as a place you have there right now, right? Yeah. It's historically um, embedded in everybody and they know history of this yeah. place. So they will connect faster than with the Brad Pitt's uh, uh, face, for example. And there are so many nuances as far as like, um, uh, animals, uh, for example. To many people, animals may be funnier than any other person. And mm. to feature animal on a poster may be a thing. If there is a funny dog running around or doing something weird, it may be a stronger signal to see the movie and be there to enjoy this creature than being with this actor. So different people have a different approaches. And I think Europe is looking at this from slightly different perspective. As I, I've been always describing this uh, a marketing poster, it's one of the doors that leads into the film, right? But you have to create other windows for other people that are interested in other stuff. Yeah. So some people um, may be because of population, because maybe of uh, uh, religion or regional uh, you know, influencers may be interested more in the romantic side of this movie, yeah. right? Yeah. So we create posters for them with this. Uh, others may be interested more into um, uh, comedic par part of this, right? So we create posters there for them. So you have different thematic posters for different groups, and at the end, it adds up to a lot of people yeah. sitting in the, in the yeah. seats. And I'll yeah. tell you, when I do a presentation to a client, I'm actually talking about why I make my decisions. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I don't just turn in a bunch of comps and say, huh, hope you like them. <laughs> I say, hey, great, here's why we're doing this approach. 
this approach and this approach, and we're talking to different audiences mm -hmm. for each one. So let me show you real quickly just kind of a, a breakdown of a common campaign. You've got a one sheet, you've got a two sheet, you've got a 14 by 48 billboard, and then you have character cells. And I'd like you all to know about that because if you're trying to break into our industry, you want to know what these words mean. And you want to know when you talk to a client or if you're trying to get a job, when you design, design a campaign. Don't just design a one sheet and say, hey, can I work there? Design a campaign because what you're telling the people you're interviewing with, you're saying, hey, great. I know what a one sheet is. I know what a two sheet is. I understand what a character cell is. And then just if anyone cares what a standard one sheet is, uh, it's generally 31 inches by 44 at 300 dpi. Little mm -hmm. factoid for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's but, jump. But we do comps. They're smaller, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Build, I build my comps big, but that's because yeah, yeah, I'm a size yeah. queen. So um, generally a comp is 15.5 inches by 22 inches at 150 dpi, if anyone cares. Awesome. So now awesome. I want to talk about, so now we talked about colorization and history a little bit. Let's talk about solves. So this would be kind of, well, what kind of solve for the show? Is it a graphic solve? So this is the current Indiana Jones um, graphic solve here on the left. I did not do these, by the way. I just went on IMP awards and looked up these. I find often graphic solves are phenomenal for initially teasing out a movie. Also, if you have bad photography, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bad photography, this is a great way to, to do different graphic solves. And um, you'll see it's very <laughs> ubiquitous and common. These are A titles. You know, um, Durango is a um, A title, Suburbicon, but aren't they interesting? So if you don't have photography, so those of you trying to get started and you don't have a lot of material, doesn't mean you can't do some really cool posters. Often independent cinema is using this uh, language to, to speak to, to the audiences. They seem to be a little bit more complicated. You have to sort of decipher what's going on, which is intriguing to me. I love it. Yes. Don't get me wrong. Well, and your posters are <laughs> incredible. Ah. Um, Incredible. So again, yeah. Clockers, I think this is a great solve. Do you remember that Saul Bass piece I showed you earlier? You can clearly see an influence on that, from that Saul Bass yeah. piece right here. All right. And these are also, I consider, very graphic solves. Even if you look at Vengeance, it's a little more um, photographic, but it feels like kind of a graphic uh, container. So look at these. Aren't these fun? This guy named Hans Hillman. I love his work. Really beautiful, beautiful. fun, beautiful. graphic. Awesome. And then here's some other kind of graphic solves, but very interesting. So the Eternal Sunshine uh, was done at BLT. It's so fascinating. I don't know if you were working there then. Someone literally piled up magazine pages, 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 and tore it out, and they photographed it. It was fantastic. So I show that because I want to remind you, you can get outside of the box. You mm -hmm. don't have to do everything on this computer. You can actually do things by hand and then put them in. That right? is organic. I believe the Superman poster was, was made that way too, phys physically uh, tearing. Yeah, uh, tearing uh, stuff out. Stuff, so please don't out. don't try to just always do it in the computer, right? What it gives you, it gives you this sort of randomness that you won't achieve otherwise. It's sort of calculated, pre pre predictable in a way, but when you tear, when mm -hmm. you paint, when you spill, when you smoosh, uh, you get this organicness of that, and that may be the part of the language that you're using within your poster. I will tell you, and I didn't show it, I'm sorry I didn't think of it. I did a whole DC campaign with an ad agency, and what we did is we printed these posters. We did them in the computer, illustrations. We printed them at size, at mm -hmm. full 60 inches, and tore them, and then photographed those tears. And, and then put them back this in. This was up to scale, right? Literally at scale. Yes. It was fa fantastic. So I just want to encourage you, you don't have to do it all in the box. Plus, when you're looking at this screen, it resonates differently than it'll actually resonate when it's out in the world. So you want to make sure you look at your pieces mm -hmm. in the format. Um, containers, check out these containers. It's a great way to, to consider a solution for a design job. And look how different these are, but they're all containers. All of these are different forms of containers, right? And I know uh, we talked a little bit about, you'll see the same formula again and again, but imagine there's a lot of money. A mm. lot of money goes into these productions and folks are afraid. Folks are afraid to, to try things too different. So they kind of want to stay safe because there's so much invested in the project. So take a look at this. This is all the same job, uh, a simple favor, but look at how different, but they're all container solves, but completely different vibes, right? This is a current one. This is out right now from Marvel Studios. I'm sorry, I don't, I think, um, God, art, uh, Artworks did it. I'm sorry, I don't know which agency did this, but look how beautiful. This is still kind of a container solve, but look how different it is. I think this is quite clever. And it tells you the story. You have a face and then you have yeah. 
that the monster. Windows thing. Yeah, 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 coming in. So, and on the the um, the teaser on the right, you see the monster shadow behind them. So it's like a second read. Anyway, very clever. Again, kind of common video box style. Mm -hmm. Can I say video yep. box? I'm not old. But again, <laughs> very safe. People like this yeah. because it's familiar. So it's a very safe solve. And this can also be, type can also be a container. So think about that. Passages is out right now. That's a container solve, right? Awesome. Okay. So illustration, someone earlier in the chat was saying how much they loved Drew Struzan. And Drew Struzan is such a art machine. There you go. Thank you for someone pointing that yep, out. Yep. Art machine did that last one. Um, so uh, 80s illustration inspired is obviously a very, very popular look. Yep. And Drew Struzan is the master who created it and everyone likes it. But you'll notice people like it. And it refers to a certain vibe of show, I would yep, say. Yep. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit later about some actions that you might be able to use to help get some of these looks. So the current Indiana Jones poster, as you notice, is still Drew Struzan look because that's in fact, I don't even know if he did it. He may have done it. But Drew Struzan is the, the creator of this look for sure. And it's good to know this. It's good to know your vocabulary because if a client comes to you and they say, hey, I want a Drew Struzan look, well, what is that? Well, this is what yeah. it is. And you want to make sure you know that. Okay. And then you'll see, look, look how ubiquitous it is. Now, the Avenger stuff is not quite Drew Struzan, meaning it's not that same illustration style. It's not as far drawn, if you will. But look at the Andor. Yeah, Definitely, beautiful, that it's, beautiful it's work, an right? Evolution of, of of that to current times and yes. way, as we can see it. Like I, I think one day I sort of discovered why the top head is so big, and uh, I, that's my that's my hypothesis that it's so big, then when you walk by, it's at the same scale scale as yours, and then you can connect with those. Oh, eyes. that's so interesting! I never this, thought this about that. This is my that. hypothesis. That's why we make it so big. Actually, as an artist, we can see it at a small size, how it's going to look on a big size. And then you connect like one to one. Interesting. Uh, uh, and it grabs your attention, right? So that's my hypothesis. Check if it works. If it doesn't, ah, I'm sorry. I was well, going. that's a really interesting point, especially mm -hmm. with streaming now. If you look at the Avengers piece and you look at the bottom <laughs> right hand side, you can't read any of it. It's too yeah, messy. Yeah, so yeah. that would not work on a streaming platform. So often at Netflix, we had to rework stuff uh, to work at a small size. Speaking yeah. of uh, like all the uh, uh, little tricks that we do, little elements that we're hiding, these were useless. These turned out to be just pixels because at the small size, you can't see them. So you have to rework this to make it work into the space. So think about it as well if you're designing. What kind of space is it going to be? Do I have yeah. a place for yeah. to say a lot? Or I should maybe focus on the facial expression as this is going to be 140 pixels moving uh, across the screen, right? And um, trust me, I can tell you this, that large posters, when they're shrunk, they may not work. A hundred percent. People yeah. will not get the story. A hundred percent. And then on this with color, you can use color to tell a story. So with horror, of course, it's it's red. But also check out the blood quantum with the breaking of the the, the pl platform, having the leg come over. Again, this these kind of solves are when you don't have really great photography, mm -hmm. right? But you need to come up with a solution, right? And breaking that, that uh, frame. Oh, I just love breaking out of that frame. Yeah. Again, color. You know what's interesting? If you look at these four posters, they have the basically exact same treatment. Mm -hmm. It's red, black and white, white with like white highlights. Isn't that interesting? But look how different they kind of all look. But it's the same treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. And, th and then it's in your toolbox. And they project actually different feels, right? If, even though they are oversaturated with red, some of this may be horror, some may, may be actually intriguing. The, the Red Sparrow is actually really intriguing. doesn't yeah. look like a horror at all. And yet it has a lot of uh, uh, red in it, right? So yeah. if you don't think about it, you can mis misguide folks of, on what it is. Look at the Overlord. Definitely something is going on there, that, right. the, besides the face and the background, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, hoping this gives you guys some ideas so that when you talk about the tips and tricks that you learn throughout Adobe Live or anywhere else you're getting them, you can start calculating why you're going to do those things. And uh, I like the type behind the bodies. I think that's a, oh, yeah. a nice and solve. If, if you're, this also will help you, uh, uh, go back on? help you to write the prompts if you're using AI, right? Understanding that, you will know what to ask of the machine to generate for you and why, right? So you have to sort of process this, like, what I want to get from this. Uh, should this be a textured red or not textured red, right? Should it be a sunset or, or night? Yeah. And you have to think about the story that you want to tell and ask this for generation. And that helps you tremendously. So if you're thinking about this, think what it should say, sketch it, draw it, paint it, I don't know, whatever you want it. But think about what it should say. And then you have 
complete freedom and ease of asking machines what to generate for you. Yeah. Elements or explanatory. Yeah, or absolutely. Like yeah. And I'm going to try to speed through this because yeah. I think I'm beating a dead horse a little bit. But again, uh, different ideas. Fun fact with Tom Cruise. Boy, he likes his profile. Have you noticed <laughs> that? He, uh, yeah, we were talking about that earlier, <laughs> yes. right? And he likes full face. So if you're trying to get a job at an agency who gets to work on uh, Tom Cruise bits, then you want to make sure you, you know follow what, what Tom likes. And Tom likes his face front and center. And if you collect 10,000s of those data points, you're a poster designer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> OK, awesome. And it go OK, so we have the flame or fire solve. But there's many ways of doing it. You can have a lot of flame, or you can have just a little bit of flame. But again, some, something to consider. I think oftentimes folks don't realize having white with flames works really well. Yeah. Like I think they tend to put flames on black all the time, and sometimes no, having it on something light. That's more sophisticated. Yeah. So again, just some different. Trying to give you some ideas here to think about things differently. Breaking the frame is always a really nice solve. Water solves very ubiquitous. Um, what makes it water? Okay. Well, you've got the blue. You've got the cyan. And I, this may seem obvious, but I clearly see this missing in people's work. At mm -hmm. least when people are sending me work to try to to come in and, and get some work. Look at this Marseille poster. I love this. I don't know if they did it in, in that was, Europe. That was my time at Netflix. So uh, beautiful. Yeah, Absolutely uh, beautiful poster. And that arabesque of the water, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, Negative yeah. space filled with the water, though. Ugh, absolutely gorgeous. And water doesn't have to be blue. You can have yeah. warm colored water. Uh, this is out right now, Very again. Nice. So this is a common and kind of um, fun fact to uh, have this combination where your teasers actually get put together to make one giant piece. So, And this was would, will be in the future when AI is available for professional work, a job ripe for AI generation. Mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, double exposure is a very common uh, tool, can be very effective. Different ways of getting there. You know, Double exposure where it's more of a container, kind of like line double exposure, or actually just a full double exposure. Um, you'll notice some people tend to do the same kind of solve. So this guy, Aaron, he's got a, I like his work. I think it's really interesting. He clearly has a style he likes to do, you know, profile, uh, double exposure, or graphic solve. OK. Now let's now talk. Let's, where do let's you get dive elements in. From? I know that was a lot, you guys, but I think it, hopefully you'll find it useful. So where do you get elements? How do you start doing this? And this is where the um, AI kind of can help you. AI with Adobe Stock, because one thing I'd like to really stress is these things are not one button solves. Yeah. They are not one button solves. Some I think folks think, oh, you just go to AI and you type in something and bada bing, you're done. No, it's a combination thing. So I would like to talk right now. I'm going to do a little demo about this Electric Dreams and show how you can use Adobe Stock some gen fill adjustment uh, by extending with generation fill and adjustment layers and how to make some assets. So yeah. we'll dive on into that. Yeah. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, please do ask them in the chat. I'll be going through them and actually interrupting Lisa with, with her work. Uh, what I wanted just to say is that how we look at AI, I think uh, I can maybe speak for Lisa as well, is that it's not the main tool. It's a little helper that does it for you. The, the more you use it in combination with something, the more original you are. Uh, relying just on AI, it's, um, it's a great approach at the moment, maybe. But if you want to advance it, make it more unique in a way, and this is a way I think uh, designers are looking at it, to become unique, to monetize on it eventually one day, to create a style, as you mentioned. Um, that's a part of the design, right? The composition, the storytelling, that's all in your brain here. Uh, then the typography, all in your brain, right? Then execution, it's stock, is a real uh, life uh, structures, figures, uh, photos, and AI. And to fill the gaps, and Lisa, go go ahead. I don't yeah. want to take too much. So time. again, I, I because I think some folks think, oh, you just type in uh, Firefly and you type in and you get a poster <laughs> and you're done. A hundred percent no. So this is more what it will look like real world. Keep in mind, this is not legal yet to use for commercial work. So I do this on every single job I have as a practice, so that when the job when it does get released for professional work, I'm not behind the eight ball and I will already know what to do. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I, for this for Electric Dreams. It was a job for um, Amazon. I was comping. I found this image on stock. And I have to tell you, I absolutely love Adobe Stock because you can find, do a bunch of searches, and then just go ahead and place your linked file into your image. It will show up here. 
You scale it however you like. You can buy it once you like it. So what I like about this is you're not committing to something before you know if it's going to work. Yeah. Okay, and I think it's really important. And yeah. sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So don't buy it before. Don't buy it before you want it. Yeah. So on this one, I'm going to show you what didn't work because I think this is important and most people don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have some space, right? So I'm just going to make a loosey-goosey selection. I'm in the gen fill. I want to be really clear. I'm on Photoshop beta and I have showing my contextual taskbar, which you have to have so that you can um, get this prompt up. And I, wrote, I wanted a star field. I'm really bad at typing, by the way, so please forgive any error that you're, you get. You're pretty good with selection on, on your trackpad. That, isn't that, that an amazing that. selection? That's awesome. Uh, Smarty wallet. <laughs> oh my god. It put her hands in. Oh. This is what I got. I was like, <laughs> all right. So then what I did to work uh, work around on that is I said, okay, well that was crap. We're good to And go. I make the same selection and I'm going to start over without, um, without her showing. Star field. So behind the scenes, she was influencing, like the woman within the screen was influencing the yes. output. So it was reading the whole canvas and not just selection and was thinking like, hmm, what can I add to your thing? Right? So, and I, I, I'm not trying to be a, a jokester when I show you this because I think this is, this is me as a longtime Photoshop user trying to use AI and going, oh my God, I cannot figure this out. So I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of the hiccups. So then I did a whole selection do the whole thing and write uh, um, field of stars on black. And at this point, I'm going to be honest, I was getting a little frustrated and I was like, well, am I a spaz? I can't figure out why I don't know how to use this. And I think, to be honest, Tomash, because I think you are in the back scenes of Adobe so much, your knowledge is so good and you have so much knowledge mm -hmm. of this. Some of us are coming at this and we're not quite sure what we're getting. So at this point, I said, great. This is not working for me, no problem. And I went back to my Adobe stock and I found a, a star field. Awesome. Excellent, right? So, so I got a little frustrated, but then I went back in and I started typing. And on this one, I made a little selection and I typed in space, stars, nova, galaxy. Let me show you what I got. And this is where I wanted to talk about AI assist. So AI is assisting me. It's not doing the whole thing. It's not a super huge magic tool. It's in combination with other stuff. And I guess I'm going to tell you what I feel like it did is this makes stock searching so much easier. So I put this on screen mode. So when it's on normal, the black will show, right? You all see that? So I just put this on screen. And then I did another one. And this time I typed in stars, Hubble, space, images. Sweet. Right? And this is what I got, a little more awesome possum sauce. Now, it didn't give me the main bit I wanted. So what I did, once again, I, and I'm going to pump this up a lot for you guys, I think, is the Adobe stock. So I found this really great image on Adobe stock, and I thought, you know what, this is going to work for me. Control, click, place linked. Boom. There it is. OK, it's too big, no big deal. I'm just going to scale it down and put it in here. And in fact, just for giggles, I'm going to turn everything off so I can see what I'm doing. That's awesome. This isn't going to work for me, right? Because it's cut off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Welcome to AI generated film. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So I'm going to just select this. You can either do it uh, by selecting a layer this way. I'm going to inverse it, Command Shift I. So now I'm selecting everything but this. And on generative fill, type in nothing and just let it go. So what I'm hoping it'll do is it will fill out this piece. Now this is how, for me, in a real world work situation, because this is more predictable than the searches. So while on a lot, oh, look how cool that Sweet. is. Isn't that beautiful? Not so beautiful. Oh, interesting. And very not so beautiful. Please do me a favor. I like to uh, vote. Please vote, please vote. Yes. They have to know, did this work? This was lousy, no thank you. This one, poor result. This one, good result. Pardon me, good result. So it, this is how we get it to assist us. So what I'm going to do is select those two layers and put it in a folder and Command-T and transform it. Oh, I better put her on so I can see what I'm doing, right? Yeah. And in fact, why don't I put that folder in opacity? And then I can put it in, Ooh. put it back at 100% opacity. And now um, here's what I like to do. I wish this always made a folder on normal. 
not pass through. So I'm making that planet folder on normal mode and then I can darken it down because see how it's not dark at the bottom, right? So I'm gonna just do a curves move and I'm just gonna pull it way dark, go back to my layers, command I to make your mask black, take your paintbrush and then 100% opacity and I'm just gonna darken that up I know some people at Adobe, um, I'm going to talk to them. Do you know, this. do you have friends? I, it's really I, great if yeah, you have friends. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a black mask. I always, 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 let me say that one more time. I always make a black mask and then paint mm -hmm. in with white. And why I do that is I can see where I'm brushing in. And if you do a white mask and a race, you might miss something on an outside area and it gets printed and your boss comes into your office and says, <laughs> what's this mistake you just made? I'm not talking about personal experience. I don't know what you are what you are implying here. Uh, no, no, me neither. I've never missed that. Never. And then um, I would probably put that same group on, I will change my mind and put it on screen because I want it to show through. But do you see how this is like AI assisting me to create a composition? So it's Adobe Stock, AI, I let it assist me where I can. The generative fill is getting better and better and better and better, but it's not perfect yet. Plus you can't use it on jobs yet, yeah. but it's assisting me. And then maybe I'll put a color correction on it to make it uh, warmer because the Electric Dreams had a warm color for the logo. But hopefully this is giving you some ideas how Gen Fill can actually help you with image extension. Honestly, I think it's the best thing about yeah. it is uh, image oh extension. God. Okay, so um, so yeah, so that's one thing to show you. Let me go back to my little demo here for just a second. So again, what did we do? We used Adobe Stock, we did Gen Fill to make extensions. And then I used an adjustment layer just to change the color. And then I wanna talk about the Gen Fill assets. What do I mean by that? Those stars I made, that was Gen Fill, right? So I'm gonna show you this next piece mm -hmm. here. Awesome. And talk more about this. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to Shout out a question or two. Uh, there is a question. Is, it, is Genfield pulling uh, references from Adobe stock? Uh, I'm not sure if I will fully uh, uh, reply uh, and answer the question. The whole Firefly is trained on Adobe stock. So in a sense, yes, it does uh, uh, use Adobe stock as, as a reference. And the reason why the stars were out of uh, uh, scale at the beginning, the software didn't know what's the scale of, the, of yes. this. If you give it reference, let's say human or elephant or something, it will know how to fix this. But yeah. uh, just out of uh, the box, it has no clue uh, where the scale is. So yeah. how we train this, it's, it's a part of that. Yeah, and this is part of the learning, and this is part of my learning mm -hmm. as well. So, oh, do I type in wide angle? Do I type in uh, 24 millimeter yeah, lens? And I'm learning, we're learning out there, and yet this is still functional for work. So I keep saying the Gen Fill extension, like I extended that, that planet. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I think is absolutely without doubt the best function of Gen Fill is the, what I call removal, <laughs> Gen Fill removal. So again, Gen Fill, make a selection and hit generate and touch nothing, touch nothing. It, I'm, mwah. Awesome. I mean, I'm if, telling you. Oh. If, if you're searching for stock, here's the uh, tips and tricks. If you're searching in stock, uh, let's say a horse running towards the beach at night, you can use the same vocabulary actually with, with the prompts here at, in Photoshop because it takes literally the same vocabulary. So it's somewhere between uh, traditional new prompts and search somewhere. So uh, it won't probably do the HD or something like this, but uh, it fully understands the language of stock search. So you can you can go between stock and Photoshop actually super easily, and, even with the language. Right. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to show you here is, so I'm trying to just build a, a Western style background here. And I've got I had two people walking on this hike I took last weekend. And then these are some options. This is the option I like. I think it's beautiful. And then the thing I love about this is that as I'm working, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have shot this so wide. Let me move this window. I need, I'm trying to do a vertical, but I'm using a really wide shot. Why don't mm -hmm. I replace it with a vertical? And so I'm changing my mind. Let me throw away all my secret sauce here. So here's a different shot. It's a little cleaner. I want to use it. Do I have to cry that I spent all that time fixing that other image? And oh, do I have time? Because we haven't talked about how many comps we have to do a day yeah. in our job. Oh my Lord, I can't even tell you, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So it's all about this, how fast can you do it? So instead I pick a different frame that's shot vertically and all I have to do is go, okay, maybe I'll get a little cup of coffee, I'll have a sip mm -hmm. of water. <laughs> 
I, I keep joking that it's not how many posters we, we, we're required to do a day, but per hour. <laughs> so that's the measure. Amen. Right. That's 100 percent true. Yeah, yeah. But so look at this. So now I have a vertical versus the horizontal. This is going to be much better for my mm -hmm. solution. And then I want to uh, I have a stock shot I put in of a gal. Eventually, you'll probably be able to generate someone like this, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But let's just say in my workflow right now, this, th this is not viable. So I have to put in a shot. And I have this shot of this gal, and I'm like, yeah, that's all right. It's not great. And I was asking, um, I don't know if it was Jesus or you, I was saying, oh, I was asking Jesus Ramirez. I was like, I wonder if you can use Genfill to help with your masking, like to mm -hmm. help something fit in. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got a select subject mask. I'm just going to command click on that layer, and I'm going to go to selection, and I'm going to trans uh, modify it, and I'm going to contract it. But I don't know, let's just say two pixels. Two pixels yeah. And then I'm going to inverse it, Command-Shift-I. And then what I'm going to do is I want to see, do you remember when we erased all that stuff? I'm going to just tighten up the selection just a wee bit here. Wee bit. Wee bit is a technical term. <laughs> Very. Uh, and scientific. then what happens if I hit generate and I don't type anything? Ooh. What's it going to do? Now. Us demo gods, we have this thing that happens, which is you never know how the AI is going to work. <laughs> so Boom. it's kind of like, right. but holy crap, look at this, you guys. Can I say that? Is yeah, that yeah, yeah, you can say that. Look, it gave her a shadow. Mm -hmm. Okay, that hair is a little weird. This one's, oh, it put a mountain behind her even. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, I think this one is totally viable. So let's say you're doing a comp and you have to rush, 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 and you just want to see if this is even viable to your client. Well, what did that take? 10 seconds? Yeah. 10 seconds. That's all. And then what I did is I made some atmosphere in the front because when you're doing a movie poster, you always have to have type. And how I did this is, I'm going to erase this real quick so I can just show you a little tip. This is for, I have a really pros. groovy brush. Um, it's called a dust brush. I love oh. this brush. And then I'm just going to make it bigger. And then I'm doing this with a trackpad, so don't judge. You see how it's mixing everything together? It's not just AI. It's not just, hey, let's go to Firefly and create this all. Well, and Tomas, I'm going to tell you, I feel like this is the dialogue that's missing mm -hmm. out there because everyone's talking about AI, but they're just going, Ugh, AI. Yeah. But you don't, you're not going to work in just AI. You have to mix all this together. We, we have actually two questions. Uh, in, OK, in, in let me do one so, thing, and then yeah, I'll have yeah, you do yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I want to blend that in a little better. So I'm going to use the Blend If sliders, and I'm going to say, hey, Photoshop, where the blacks are underneath, can you just show a little bit through so it's not quite so flat? That's a blend if slider, Sweet. in case you care. And then I think the blue sky should be more cyan. So I did a hue saturation where I took the blues and I just shifted them to cyan. And then I did a little color lookup to make it a little more Western. And the color lookup tables, if you're not using them yet, are fantastic. Awesome and too. I like crisp, warm look. It's ah, a color lookup. Okay. So yes, you had a question. There, there's right always there. I wanted to add that clouds are often the mood setting element within the posters. They can oh. be they can be like uh, with the sky replacement, right? We were so talking hold on. before this. And and you can have like really ominous clouds or really puffy ones, and that adds a mood. So when you walk by it's like, oh it's happy. Oh stuff is about to happen. So right? I consider sky replacement AI. It's not, but I consider it sky replacement. So thank you for reminding mm -hmm. me. Sure. So I had this really base scene. Please do not forget about the Uber great fantastic sky replacement. So with sky replace, you have all these blue sky settings you have. Thank you for reminding yeah, me sure, of that, sure. sweetheart. My pleasure. Um, so you can have you know, wide skies, puffy. Look how it changes the mood of that. A hundred percent. Now, I do want to stress something that is all about the whole AI issue and layering and how you do something. So I think that's great. Let's continue. Oh, crap. Do you remember when I did that gen fill? Oh, it won't work crap. now. But why am I not sad? I am not sad because I can actually just load that selection. And I believe I can just hit regenerate. Yep. Come on. The AI gods. We're never sure, are we? <laughs> Hopefully this will work. So I'm hoping this will help kind of give you an idea of how you can incorporate bo, bo, right bo, incorporate AI into a realistic, real job workflow. And mind you, when you do AI, you've got your property settings. 
properties. And you can check which one you like better. I like that one better for this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's kind of nice. No, I like this one. So, um, yeah. I have, I have a few yes, questions. Please. So, one question. Um, blue sail, mercury, this is kind of technical. And I don't feel like I can respond to that uh, about where the, you know, where the, how we train the stuff. This is more to engineering. Uh, this is where my knowledge ends. Um, uh, question from Behance. For both of you, do you find that your industry is excited about AI or skeptical? Um, and then second question, if I may, if you have a request for more painterly look of, for a poster, like a Drew Struzan, but are only provided photos, uh, do you have any go-to tricks for uh, this kind of task um, of this ask? Is this something AI can help with? Excellent. So I, if you can let me answer that uh, sketch look at the end, I promise you I will. Uh, I do have something to show you that's coming out <laughs> that I think you'll be excited about. And um, how does our industry feel? I'm going to tell you, I think our industry is um, uh, terrified and excited. It's yeah. all of that because it's new. So I'm going to run through a couple things real quickly. Um, old workflow would be to go find stock for like a, a glue page, right? Now, gen fill alternative. So I don't have to say, oh, I want a poster texture. I can type in gen fill and say, hey, can you just give me a white creased poster texture? Yeah. Hot diggity dog. Okay. Boom. Elements. And you guys stick with me. I'm here at the next hour with Jesus Ramirez and we're going to talk more about this and actually using AI for uh, modular building. Um, so I need clouds. I need smoke. I need fire. Can I get it in AI? Yes. Here's a new workflow. Do you see this? You could just paint a cloud and say, I'd like something like that. Oh, oh here's a cloud. And that you. prompt was puffy cloud on black. Bada bing. Okay. Gen fill textures. No one's talking about this, and I don't know why. <laughs> you guys can make textures. You can make seamless textures with gen fill. So I can do this skin texture. For those of you who know, I have a really easy, I think, frequency separation all on skin, how to do frequency separation. And I'm always talking about putting a skin pattern in. Where do you get the skin pattern? Leather skin texture, seamless, gen fill AI. You can make fire. You can make flames. These are all... AI generated in Gen Fill, and you can see the prompts there, flames on black, photorealistic, fire ring, yeah. smoke, clouds. And if it cuts off, use the Gen Fill for extension. All right, so the person who was asking about, uh -oh. um, this is very exciting, Russell Bindy. Brown, one of our favorite people here at Adobe, he is coming out with either today or tomorrow, Russell, there's your cue, for an action that you guys are gonna be able to get for free. It's watercolor action, painting action, pencil, cartoon vector, and it's gen fill. And where you're gonna get that is you're gonna go talk to Mr. Russell Brown on either <laughs> Instagram or Facebook and look for it in the next few days. Um, he will uh, have this and you can check it out and it's all gen fill. I'm gonna show you a file real quickly. And then Marco put in the chat airbrush film poster photo effect on yeah. Um, YouTube, YouTube, if you want to check that out. Oh my gosh, so much to talk about. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Marco. Marco is lovely. I love him. Um, we have three minutes left. I know. Ooh. I'm going to try to show it real fast. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, don't don't look at behind the scenes. The the this is the you know behind the scenes. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> nothing so when you run the action that Russell's going to give you. It's going to give you this incredible thing. So in fact, let me just run it real quick. You have your image. I'm doing it super fast because this is it. You go to your actions. You're going to load your actions. And I'm going to pick the uh, pencil sketch. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to go ahead and run it. Lord willing, it'll do it fast enough. And yes. it's going to give you a bunch of options. Uh, it'll show you 10% fill, 20%, 30 40 something like that. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Don't forget to check out Russell. Make sure you wrote him down. He's the man. The myth, the legend. <laughs> yes. And then please stay tuned at one o'clock because Jesus and I are going to be talking more about hey Amazing stuff. Sorry. Any other questions? We have a minute or so, uh, or a few minutes. It's 53. Are the demo gods going to? No, 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 one minute. Oh my, oh my God. Or not. Okay, screw it. I'm going to go to history. Let me see if I can escape this so I can show it to you. And so I want to show them everything. Stop. Stop. Yep. Okay. So here's what will happen when you get there. Layer. Oh, I almost said a bad word. F12. Uh, <laughs> there Fantastic. you go. So yeah. here's what it'll, it will give you guys. It'll give you, do you see the title? It'll say 10% of original image, 
20 percent 30 and it goes to to poodle, abstract to abstract <laughs> i okay? love the house there thank you you guys Thank you so much. It was a pure pleasure. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. Lisa, thank you so much for being oh, with I us and, you, and sharing sharing all the knowledge. It's so great to reconnect with you here and most of uh, friends there on, on chat. So thank you so much.